artillery. I artillery? Mean, yeah. We had, uh, <laughs> we were a little town called Boucher, B-U-C-H-E-T, in uh, Germany. And uh, the Germans were just across a, a small mountain. <laughs> Uh, and we're firing on this town after we had occupied. But my medical detachment I was put in a, a well, like concrete-type uh, building. They were pretty well built, by the way. A lot of them just frame houses. They were made out of stone or concrete. And uh, so when uh, when we were in there, they 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 shelled this town quite frequently. And uh, one time, the, uh, well, we had uh, kids that got pretty upset about being there. One of them fell and said, oh, they're going to they're really gonna get us now. And he started digging a foxhole in the floor of this, of this building, and it was concrete. <laughs> so the kids got kidded him about that. <laughs> but uh, fortunately, I, I didn't earn a Purple Heart. I don't miss that a bit. But, that sort of thing was the only. I know I was never under small arm fire that I was aware. Tell us a little bit about the Battle of the Bulge. Oh, right. right. Okay. Well, as I said, our E Company of the 12th Infantry held this little town of Ekternon, and uh, we didn't move during the bulge at all. We stayed right where we were in, in Luxembourg. But when the uh, Name of these. Where were was the nuts happen? <laughs> uh, oh, I can't think of it. Either. I can't either. Yeah. Huh? The stones. What did you say? The town of the stone. Right. Bastone. Bastone. Yeah, Bastone. Good Lord, yes. Bastone. All right. Okay. Well, after that, after the Germans have started pulling back, I think. To the 101st Airborne and and these other troops that had really put up a heroic battle, we we moved in then toward toward Bastogne, and uh, we were going up this road in the snow. It had snowed a lot, in that day. so we uh, we got up to a, a little crossroads, and there was a bulldozer that was uh, cleaning the snow. So we move up this road. And as we got up to it, we'd been up there within all ten yards or so. The, the bulldozer swept up a mine, a road mine, mm -hmm. and then threw it up over the uh, snowbank, and what kept it from going off? Maybe just froze. <laughs> but that was a little scary. But as we got closer to Bastogne, uh, the, the column would slow down, you know, and off to the in a ditch on the side were uh, leaflets, and so we picked up some of them, and they, these were the leaflets that, that the Germans had thrown into our troops while they were in Bastogne, telling them that Yanks, uh, you are surrounded, there's no way you can get out, if you uh, want to come out alive, hold this over your head and move and we will see that you're made prisoners. So I, I have a copy of those, of those things, uh, just outside of Bastogne. Printed in English, I hope. Yeah, printed in English. Not, not good English, but printed in English. Let's see. Well, then of course, after after that... Uh, Did you treat a lot of prisoners, a, a, a lot of uh, casualties from Bassett from the... Uh, no, no. They, they'd been... You know, really, our evacuation system was excellent. Even prisoners, they were taken back in a hurry. We, we just didn't have to hold them or, or treat them mm -hmm. for long periods of time. I'm sure a lot of you just did, but we were just in a position where we, at, at that given time, and we didn't have mm -hmm. to. Well, uh, after, let's see, well, that, the Hurtkin Forest, of course, that was, this was after that, but that, that was a terrible area too, of course. But then, now the Germans are starting to pull back uh, pretty regularly, and uh, We'd heard that the the, uh, the Russians were starting to move forward too. It had Stalingrad and all the other big battles that uh, 
where the Germans were unable to go any further. And uh, so we finally got across, uh, uh, got far enough. We, then we, we moved to the south a bit. And uh, let's see. You know, let's see, we took our, our unit took Aachen, our, uh, which is down near Bonn. And uh, from then on, the, the Germans pulled back so that we were able to get across the rivers and, and uh, we finally got up to, uh, to the Rhine. Uh, uh, but we'd also, we crossed the Danube and uh, there was a, a engineer bridge, a very nice bridge, and that uh, had a sign on it. It said, Waltz across the Blue Danube, courtesy of the 336th engineer. <laughs> You must have been pretty far south of you, down by the Danube. Yeah, we were. Yeah, yeah. We they moved us out. Then, then we moved uh, a little more to the north. But we were near Munich too. And uh, 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 the war was getting pretty well over. Yes, by then. it was. That's right. And where uh, where did you where were you on VE Day? VE Day. We were at uh, uh, <laughs> well south of Munich. I can't think of the name of the town. Now. Day. Did you have any activity uh, between that time and VE Day? Or the, the no, not very much. Uh, no. the, the Germans were not giving much resistance at all, so we mm -hmm. were just on the road all the time. Trying were there, did you have uh, Germans surrendering to you? Or no, yes, you could, to, yeah, yeah, they were marching them down the road. Then. By the way, the, the first uh, of the concentration camp people we saw were running along the roads there as we got down near Munich, holding up there, thank God, thank God, you know. They were they were dressed in these uh, uniforms, striped uniforms, yeah. like uh, pajamas, we'd call uh -huh. them. And uh, oh, they were so happy. And then some of our guys did get some pictures of some of the atrocities of the, the bodies lying there. And, uh, uh, did you see a concentration? I, I did not, no. Mm -hmm. But, you know, GIs are always trading for things. <laughs> they got, they got the pictures, but we were close to them, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, well, after VE Day, what uh, what well, you're out there? Well, we uh, we stayed in this uh, very quiet area uh, near South Munich, and then we we were moved to a little place near Bamberg, and we had our final division review, and the high point man, and that those guys who were who were ready. You were given points on certain activities and uh, engagements you've been in and so on. And our high point men then were transferred to other units. And uh, so the, 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 many of the officers then stayed with our new recruits uh, to get our equipment back to Paris. And we, we drove, I drove back to Paris and uh, uh, Turned in our my, my jeep that had been with me all, all that time, and uh, oh, near Metz, I had an interesting. We stopped at a trench and officers camp for for lunch, and uh, uh, now here again, I can't think of this, but an officer from Crawfordsville was across the room, and we we met this uh, uh, Metz. He was an artilleryman. Oh, I can't think. He's a school teacher. Is he still alive? No, he's not alive. He, he was a not state Cresselius. Oh, yeah, Cresselius. Okay. He was a colonel, and uh, uh, he recognized me. We, we spoke then, but I only saw two people from Crawfordsville the whole time. The other one was, was John Fraser, the dentist. Yeah, remember him. But, uh, we shared offices with here in Van Herbville. Who was taking care of your practice here in Crawford? Nobody. Nobody. Uh -huh. Okay. It is now. And uh, what uh, were you were, were you ever given uh, told that maybe you'd go to Japan? Uh, yes, we were. Uh, we went uh, after we turned in our equipment in uh, Paris. We went to Camp Lucky Strike, which was up near uh, Calais. Oh, anyway, we were uh, 
set up there and always had to stay about three or four days. And then we, and on July the 4th of 1945, we took off for the United States. Mm -hmm. But when we got back to... Uh, what kind of, how did you get back? Oh, this was a nice ship. It was, uh, it was another, uh, a modern tourist ship. And uh, all they they fed you anything you wanted to eat, you know, and it was it was great. It was, I, I it had been named the Major General something I made, but it was it was like a it was a liberty like a liberty ship only it was a little larger. Than that. But when we got we then were sent to Camp Butner. Where did you land? In oh, at uh, Camp Kilmer again. I mean, went back to that way, and uh, we were I was a train commander for the troops to come back to Atterbury and we were given a 30 or well, 30 days leave I guess R&R &R, uh -huh. rest and rehabilitation uh -huh. then we had to report back to uh, Camp Butner North Carolina I was at Butner were you really yeah. uh -huh. I, well, I was there uh, see from that's where one of the places I shipped out from is that right uh, well we were uh, I was given my discharge there at, uh, at Butner uh -huh. and I took the Norfolk from Western back to, to Cincinnati and then on into Atterbury uh -huh. and then, then home. Uh -huh. Since the war, what have you been doing? Well, my <laughs> goodness, that's been a long time. <laughs> you delivered my daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Since then, uh, no, that, that's been a great thing for me, you know, Bob. I, How many babies? 5,000. 5,000 babies. <laughs> and five years out for the war. That's not too bad for 50 years. <laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty good. <laughs> Anybody got a record like that besides Oh, you? I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Obstetricians have, but I, of course I did general practice too, in addition yeah. to the obstetrics. Oh. But, uh, but I've stayed in the reserve. And uh, I'm glad that I did because uh, I finally got to be a commanding officer of the 337th General Hospital at Fort Harrison. It's a paper outfit, although at one time we had about oh, 300 people in our unit, you know, but you know, it was a thousand bed hospital, yeah. supposed to be. And uh, we went to summer camp many times. What's your rank now? I'm a full colonel. Okay. Retired in 1970. Can you imagine that? Long ago. <laughs> and and uh, I must say that staying in that long has been pretty nice for my yeah. retirement. <laughs> I think besides your uh, your uh, medical activity and uh, and uh, and your military activity, you've been in a little politics too. Yes. Can you tell us about that. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh boy. Well. <laughs> You know, I'm Democrat. I, yeah, <laughs> damn Democrat. <laughs> uh, I've been defeated a few times, too, yeah. by the way, yes. I, what are some of the political jobs you've but, had here? Well, you know, I ran, the Democrats have a hard time filling their tickets, you know. But your mother was a Democrat. Yes, she, she was. was. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Okay. But I was defeated for a coroner, I think, three different times. <laughs> Which didn't make by an mad, undertaker? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think by a doctor that, that oh, time, yeah. Okay. But my first... Uh, time that I won was for Council at Large. And City when, Council of yeah, yeah, when, What year was that? That was when Paul Stump. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Back in the uh, late 50s. Right. Okay. And uh, then uh, I was, then the next four years, I was the only Democrat re-elected uh, as a councilman. Mm -hmm. And then three years after that, I ran for the state senate and was elected. What year was that? 63, I believe. And how long did you serve? I served just one term. Mm -hmm. uh, look, 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 uh, did you run after that? Yeah, I ran for re-election was defeated by Joe Harris, oh. who has mm -hmm. been there ever since. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and he's the majority whip. But, uh, yeah. it was, so. then, then after that, uh, they were again struggling for people to run for office, so I ran again and was was elected. I was always elected councilman at large. I served not never as a ward councilman, but was at large. You mean uh, county council or? No, city. City council. See, I served after. Oh, oh yeah, I've, I've forgotten. You served again. Uh -huh. Under, uh, who well, was it? Well, uh, Connect? No, no, this was before Connect. Uh, 
These are all Republicans. Oh yeah, I should have known. You should remember. You're, you're the attorney. Yeah. <laughs> but then after, uh, after I ran for, for four years then as a councilman, uh, then I decided I'd been politics enough until just four years ago and I ran again for county council. County yeah. council. And I've been reelected to that. So oh. this is the last of uh, County Council. Right. right. That's right. No, I'm not county. County, I'm county commissioner. commissioner. That's where you, you had me confused. Uh, I've confused myself. <laughs> You're the only Democrat. Right. <laughs> I'm the only, well, my son Ray, who's a judge, and we're the only two Joy. Democrats right. in the whole <laughs> courthouse. <laughs> All right. Well, I. And uh, you might mention too, Marion, that you've been on the Historical Society board for. Well, how many years? years? Seventy-five well, years. So more or less. <laughs> okay. It's been well, at least twenty. Yeah. You've been the president of this yeah, society. The president of the society. Uh -huh. And I think, by the way, that you're doing a great work here, and, well, and Mike has done yeah. a great job. Work. Yeah. And the people that, that worked on Lane Place have just can never be congratulated yeah. for all the yeah. fine work they've done. And now, if he can just get the the tower back you on the You get the tower on the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think that's about it. Thank, thank you, Mary. Thank you. Very much. Great job. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Cameraman. <laughs> <laughs>